In this tutorial, we will learn how to create a tree like this in Blender. We will also have an animation added to it, so that the tree and its leaves respond to the wind action. For this, we will make use of an add-on called Sapling Add-on, which comes by default with Blender. So we don't need to download or install anything. First, go to the Edit menu and open Preferences. Switch over to the Add-on tab. Type SAP here in the search box. You will see an option called Add Curve Sapling Tree. Please select the checkbox to enable it. And close this window. If you now go to the Add menu, under Curve, you will see a new option called Sapling Tree Generator. We will use this option to create a tree like this. So, let us start with a blank new file. We will add a tree in place of this default cube. So delete this cube and go to the Add menu. Under Curve, select the Sapling Tree Generator and Blender will add a tree like this. We can easily customize it further by changing the options in this operator box. Let us first change the viewport angle a little bit, so that we can directly see the effect on the tree when we make changes in the operator box. We have multiple fields here, and they are grouped under several different sections in this drop-down list. We will talk about them one by one. Let us start with the geometry section. First, we have the bevel. If we turn it off, we can see that the tree is nothing but a curve, it does not have any thickness. Once we enable this bevel, the trunks and the branches get visible in the tree. You can also change the bevel resolution and the curve resolution from here. For example, let us lower the curve resolution to 1. The branches are now like straight lines instead of a smooth curve. So let us go with the default value of 4, so that the tree has a better appearance. The handle type should generally be auto. And you can change the shape of the tree to any of these if we select cylindrical the tree will change to reflect a cylindrical shape. Or, if we select some other shape, the tree will immediately take the new design. You can experiment with this. The default is 10 flame, which looks like this. You can further customize any of the above shapes by changing its parameter values here. Then we have the branch distribution. If we increase this value to say, 3, we will have less compact branches, since the average distance between them has now increased. Let's go with the default value of 1.5. The branch rings field makes the branches grow in a ring pattern, and it also determines the number of such rings. And if we change this random seed, it will give us a different design of the whole tree, including its height, the style, or the pattern, and the orientation. This looks good, so we will go with the value of 6. You can also change the scale factors here. The next section is, branch radius. Here, we have this ratio field that controls the trunk thickness. If you change it to say 0.025, you will get a thicker trunk. For us, the default value is good enough. Then you have other similar parameters for the tree, you can modify them based on your requirement. Next we have, branch splitting. Here, first we have a level field which currently has level 2. If we change it to 3, we will get more branches added to the tree, with more growth. And this base split determines how many branches should be there at the first split, right after the base of the tree. If we change it to say 4, we will have 4 branches in the beginning, near the base. Let us simply go with 3 splits. There are many more such fields, you can experiment with them one by one, to customize the tree further. The next section is called pruning. If we enable this prune option, it adds some trimming effect to the tree, and you can also customize the shape of the prune by changing the value of this prune ratio to something different. This may be useful for trees in a garden or maybe in a lawn, but for natural trees, we should disable it. Now, the next section is leaves, which is very important. So far, we only have a tree, but no leaves here. In order to add some leaves to it, you have to just turn on this option, show leaves, and you get the leaves added to the tree. But you may see that we have too many leaves, they have almost covered the entire tree. That is because, in the branch splitting, we have used a level of 3. If we change this to 2, we will have lesser number of branches, and also the amount of leaves now looks far better. So let us go with this, and we will go back to the leaves section. You can change the shape of the leaves from hexagonal to rectangular here. Although these rectangular leaves do not look good, they are not natural, but you may still want to use them for some decorative scene somewhere. You can also use your own leaf object. 
You have to first design a flat mesh, as a leaf object, and you can then use it for your tree. For that, you have to use the dupli faces or the dupli verts option, with your leaf object selected here. Let us simply go with the hexagonal leaves for this tutorial. Here you can change the number of leaves. Let us use 200, so that we have some more number of leaves for our plant. And here you can change the shape, how the leaves are arranged. From conical to spherical or cylindrical, we have multiple options to customize the shape of the leaf distribution. There are few more parameters here, to fine-tune the leaf orientations. Our next section in this is, Armature. If we enable this armature option, Blender will internally create an armature and attach it to the tree, which is the first step to create some animation for this. And by using this mesh option, you can convert the tree curve into a mesh. You can then easily attach some material or texture for the tree. We won't enable this, because I want to show you how you can add a material for the tree, while it is still a curve object. You can also change the armature level from here, say we increase it to 3. It will result in a more granular armature for more complex movements. And finally, we have animation. Before you turn on this, you should finalize the tree design and its armature. Then you have to enable this armature animation. This will create necessary animation for the movement of the tree branches. Then let us enable the leaf animation as well. It can take some time to process. This is for the movement of the leaves. And you can also enable this fast preview mode. If enabled, this will hide the bevel effect of the tree in the viewport, just to make it simple, so that we can play the animation in real time, but the actual render won't be affected. You can control how fast or how slow the animation plays, by changing the speed factor, but we don't generally change this value. If you want a faster movement, a better way is to change this wind strength instead. Say we change this to 1.5. And we can also change this amplitude value for the leaves, maybe to 2 so that the leaves follow a heavier animation. We are done with the generation part. Our tree is now ready. We will verify the animation quickly in the preview mode, and then head on to the render. So, you can see a nice animation for our tree. The tree branches and the leaves are swaying due to the wind. Cool. If you add some tree like this in any scene, it becomes very lively and eye-catching. Our next task is to set some materials for the tree and the leaves. Let us first go to the rendered view mode. And if it is a daylight scene, we can also turn on the HDRI lighting. You can see that one tree armature is added here, under which, we have all the other objects for the tree, like the tree bones here, and then the tree curve. Under this, we have the tree itself, and separately the leaves. We will first add a material for the leaves, so select it, and go to the materials tab. Create a new material. In the base color, we can select some shade of green. Maybe like this. And probably we can make it little darker as well. We got the leaf material added into this list. Now, click on this plus button to add one more entry into the list, which we will use for the trunk of the tree. Then create a new material. And for the base color of this material, let us select the image texture option. We will use an image that we have downloaded for the texture of the trunk. You can use any image of your choice. Let us open it. As a result, we will get the trunk material created in this list. Now select this tree curve object. You can see that the new material option is grayed out or disabled. So from this drop down, select the third material that we have just added. The trunk is not visible here as we have enabled the fast preview mode, so hit F12 to render this particular frame. We can see the tree branches and the trunk, and the texture material as well. We will now render this scene, with animation. So go to the Render Properties tab, and make suitable changes to these fields as appropriate. You may need to select the location, where you want to keep the output file. And in the file format, let us select the video. With that, if we now render the scene, we will get an output like this. The tree is looking great, as it is swaying in the air. You may notice that our output is generated without HDRI, because the HDRI was turned on only for the viewport. But I think this is looking very good even without the HDRI. So, that was a quick guide on how to use sapling trees. I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.